asking the questions mainstream journalists will never ask. This is your Richie Allen Show on RichieAllen.co.uk, Fab Radio 2 in Manchester, and TriggerWarning.tv. Caller, welcome to the program. Good evening. <coughs> Hello, can you hear me, Richie? Loud and clear, who am I speaking to? Yeah. It's Bill Scott here. Uh, uh, just give me a second. Just try to turn you off on the laptop so I don't... No worries. Bill, experience. take your time. Take your time. No panic at all. Turn it off on the laptop there. Right. Right. I love what you say about meds and over medication in the States, right? With children especially. I, I love what you say. But um, it's not the same over here. The You can't just go to your GP and get medication. You have to go through uh, the clinics. And they are very, very, very careful about the titration, about what they give you. They've got to follow NICE guidelines, which is a very stupid name, but it's called N NICE, yeah? Okay. So they're very, very careful now. Now, uh, I actually have ADHD, and I was only diagnosed about eight years ago. And my, I, I blew so many jobs. I mean, it was not so bad in the record industry because you could be an idiot in there quite easily. But when it came to regular work, like, you know, procrastination was set in, no sense of time, you know, lack of focus. If, if I wasn't interested in something, that's been the same. I mean, when I did my degree, God knows how I got through it yeah. because I was interested in everything and couldn't stop hyper-focusing. Bill, hold on We're for a second. Kidding. Bill, Bill hold, on, ha hold that thought. We're going to take a bit of time with this. If you need okay. me to call you back, by the way, um, get me. Th no. This is great because we're getting right of reply here, which is only which is only right yeah, and proper. Yeah. So I want to give yeah, you yeah. I want to give you plenty of time. So in g give us the day to you've got plenty of time now. Give us the day to day. Y you mentioned they're not being able to focus problems. Lay it on mm. the line to us, Bill. What was it like? What was the day to day experiences like? Well, being able to plan my day was impossible because of procrastination. You know. I, I mean, it's hard to describe how bad it is, Richie, really. Um, I mean, you, you know, you, you're saying everybody suffers from, you know, everybody's got... It's not actually true. I mean, I run, I run focus groups across the northeast of England with adults with ADHD, and I've now met hundreds of people. And it, it's further complicated but because it always comes bundled, bundled with something else. Right. So, for example, I've got dyspraxia, and I fall over all the time. Oh, I've shit. got dyscalculia. Uh, you can have autism, all sorts of things running alongside it, which doesn't get, it doesn't always get acknowledged. Now, there's a key point I want to make, Richie, in terms of Ritalin. It's a con yes, it's a control system, a uh, substance rather, very hard to get get a hold of, very hard, and uh, so you, you really have to work alongside the clinic for that. Now, it works. This is the key bit, Richie, and what people understand. It works counterintuitively. If you took, you, you say you don't have it, so if you took ADHD, you would get speeded up, okay? I, when I, if I take Ritalin, and, and be, to be honest, I much prefer homeopathy, and because I've tried it, I've tried various things. I prefer homeopathy or herbal treatments, or you know, there's other ways, the strategies you can, you can get into. There's a fantastic website called Attitude, which gives you some really good guidelines. I pass out the guidelines at those support groups. We all do as we find out different ways of working. Yeah. You know, mind maps work brilliantly for able to capture ideas and stuff like that. Now, the Ritalin, um, it works counterintuitively. For me, it calms me down. Now, when I was younger, I took a lot of drugs. Um, you know, I was quite a hippie and all that kind of stuff. Now, I used to take quite a lot of speed and I couldn't understand the difference between me and my friends. My friends would be, oh, they'd be climate trees. They'd be all the stupid things that you do, right? Especially when you combine it with LSD and things like that. For me, when I took speed, I was, now I didn't know at the time I was actually self-medicating. I've become very calm. I could actually meditate on speed. I know that sounds silly, yeah. but it's actually true. And it's the same thing with energy drinks, although I think they're a vile concoction. I mean, I did try them for a while. And this happens with other people that I've talked to. Uh, I'm not saying this is just about myself, you know. This is uh, this this is um, very common. People with ADHD can take energy drinks and it will calm them down. That's now, very interesting I to me. Don't, I, I don't necessarily agree with the net that it should be called ADHD because um, Russell Barclay, a professor who specialised in this, and uh, his brother died driving me away. I used to do like an idiot. Um, 
you know, he's devoted 30 odd years of his life to working with ADHD and stuff. And yes, he does get criticism for working alongside uh, one of the main drug companies, but his research is, is incredibly valid. Um, I'm, really, I'm losing this thread now. You're not, you're not. <laughs> Sorry. Listen, first of yeah. all, Bill, you've got loads of time, by the way. Let, let me just, oh, thank re- you, thank let, you. Let, let me just I'll, remind I'll, our can listeners. I, can I just say, Richie, that I really appreciate the, uh, the opportunity to talk about this, because I, I certainly can understand it from your point of view, uh, and that I'd like to come up to prisons as, as well in a mem- moment. You said, what, I interrupted you, uh, forgive me. Sorry. No, not at all. Um, you, I, I do enough interrupting, so um, I, it's about time, <laughs> I got, about time I got some of it back. I have no problem with that. Let, let, let me remind our listeners what's, um, what's occurred there. So I had a chat in the first hour about Richard Bacon, and I, I, I've got some very strong opinions about yeah, ADHD. I heard it. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm, I'm speaking to the listeners now. Um, oh, beg your pardon. Not at all. So, so I've expressed my, I've talked about Bruce Perry and others, Richard Soule, there are many others, and their opinions on ADHD. I've suggested, in fact, I, I, I believe that environmental factors might be a huge. Um, thing here and might might be mm-hmm. might might be maybe the problem might be maybe all the problem or some of the problem so I had I had my say uh, Bill has rung up Bill Scott Bill was diagnosed with ADHD and um, he has received treatment for it um, I'm, I, I, I'm so thrilled that you called up you have no idea because right of reply and it's good to talk with somebody like you now you talked about Bill you talked about procrastination procrastination and mm. not, not being able yeah. to you know, to, to, to finish tasks or to get things done or to plan, as you said. I felt a bit of that over the years, Bill. But what, the point I'm going to make now is, what about those who say that these are, these are natural things to feel and that there might very well be environmental factors in, in play that bring about these feelings of procrastination and, and, and these other symptoms that they say are evidence of ADHD what about that as an idea? And you know all these doctors I mentioned earlier on who say that, you know, most of us have two symptoms at least in the spectrum that's supposed to make up ADHD. So what do you say to that? Well, a lot of the symptoms are amplified versions of what everybody goes through. I agree with that. Yeah. But you, in terms of procrastination, which you, which, um, you reminded me about, the the intensity of it is just horrendous. You're actually crippled, absolutely crippled. Now, I didn't really understand what it was like to concentrate till I first till I tr- first tried Ritalin. Now, I refused it for the first year after after diagnosis. Now, I uh, actually nearly lost my job through it. Um, <laughs> they've tried five times to sack me. I've just finished a four and a half month. Um, sabbatical I call it but it was I was uh, suspended because I tried to defend somebody but I did it in the wrong way um, the, you, you have that problem as well so you can go from being crippled and find it really hard to concentrate to the other extreme uh, where you can just leap in with both feet now what I did recently which led to a suspension and eventually just right morning and stuff like that the, um, what I did was I I heard about somebody who was psycho- like a psychopath who preyed on people with mental health problems that work in the field of mental health. And uh, I was so worried. I got an email from somebody describing a person who was incredibly dangerous. He was a psychopath and absolutely awful. I warned people immediately, but I missed out the bit with the information governance where, you know, you've got all these bullshit protocols. You can't just warn somebody these days. You've got to go through 10 steps, you know. I could do that. So that, that again was an example of like leaping in and not thinking first, uh, which is a very common thing. So you go from you can go from one extreme where you can't do anything to you jump in with both feet and do everything all at once. Um, but couldn't the, that, intense, Bill? Bill, let me jump in. Rich, sorry, sorry, mate. Sorry. No, no, let me jump yeah, in. And look, we have loads of time, by the way. Let me. I have to keep repeating that. What? But these, these some of this stuff is stuff I've encountered. I've yes, been. I, I, be. I've suffered from task saturation at times in my career, when I couldn't mm-hmm. actually put one foot in front of the other. But I was able to think that out, and, and on occasion I was able to talk to people about it. What you're describing sounds pretty normal to me, Bill. And at any stage, did anybody talk about cognitive uh, therapy or or even? you know, counselling to talk this sort of stuff out before we get to the stage of medicating. Did yes. anybody, did, yeah. did you do that? Well, 
let me explain that from about 20 onwards I looked everywhere to find answers to as to why I was the way I was I had no clue you know I mean I, I wish I wish I could actually explain this better if you can imagine you know what you're saying you experience some of the same things yeah if you can imagine that amplified to 11 you know you're really really overcome by this thing I mean, I used to drive like an idiot. I was always speeding. Uh, I loved, and what, what you're doing there is you're self-medicating with yeah. the speed. You're actually getting the dopamine levels running through. That's all Ritalin does. It gets the uh, dopamine levels running through. When I first took Ritalin, it was a bit like that amazing film where the guy takes a, he, he takes a tablet and he kind of, you know, you he, he just see everything doing it. You feel a bit like that. It, uh, and it's quite weird because all of a sudden, you can concentrate. And I remember saying, oh, my God, so that's what you lot, that's how your brains work. I had no idea. Now, the downside is that you know, if you don't believe in medicines like me, I hate drug companies, I hate big pharma, blah, blah, blah. Um, but there's no denying that I had, I had a window of opportunity to see what it was like not to be the way I'd been every day of my life. I mean, I was beaten to a pulp as a, as a child. I was always, always getting into trouble. Right. But you know, Bill, now, you know, right? let me, let me, let me, let me jump now, back man. in. How old are you now? How old are you now? I'm, six, I'm 60 bloody eight. Are you 60 head, right. Yeah. Now, before, before and we I get... Did, be, so I didn't get diagnosed till I was 60. And now I'm working with people who are older than me who have had, gone through very similar things. Everybody goes through something. It's a different set of experience for everybody. There are some core things which we've mentioned. Yeah. If you can just imagine it though, this is wrapped up. It, it's a nightmare, Richie, honestly. Um, I don't I doubt it, you see. You see, this is the yeah. thing. I don't doubt for a minute that Richard Bacon felt that his life was turned upside down. And I have no doubt in my mind that what you're telling me is real. The symptoms are real. There's no doubt about that. My point is, when we talk about children, and you talked about your childhood, Bill, ch mm. you, w what we're doing with children is completely unnatural. We are putting now them... Let, let me just finish this thought now. Sorry, we we, sorry, we are sorry. putting children in uncomfortable as hell clothing. We are telling them to sit down and stay still for hours in primary school. We're going out, you, you know, we're, we're, we're going against every instinct that's in the child's body. No wonder the child acts up or gets fed up or chooses to mentally check out and not to learn what it is they're being told because they're bored. And this is happening all over the world. And, 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 and they want to medicate that. And I, I want to read you a tweet from Dean. Now, Dean works in, in care with elderly people. And he said, Richie, the medication is the key. The people who suffer mental illness, now we're not talking about you, Bill. The people who suffer mental illness find treatment through modern medicine. The problem, and through my experience, is the doctors never look to the cause. Society is broken, says Dean. Basically, somebody has looked at you, and these are genuine issues, Bill. What you're saying is genuinely problematic. You can't finish a task. You can't move on to the next thing. That's a problem. But what Big Pharma wants to do, in my opinion, and I'm going to shut up now and give you the floor again, what Big Pharma <laughs> wants to do is they want to just, they, 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 they want to give you a pill and make that go away. But nobody's looking at the causes of it. And we could talk about the environmental factors like Wi-Fi, like, you know, mobile phones and all this sort of stuff as well. What about my point about the children, Bill? It's an unnatural play. And you know, I'm going to say something else and you're not going to like this either. No, you, I totally agree with you. What about it's your job, though, Bill? Let, 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 my final question, no, and then no, I really no, am well, going well, to shut I'll, up. I'll, I'll, my final no, question. Let me ask this final stick, question. Can I just stick with the children thing? Yeah, and then we'll come back to your if, job. If, go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. If, if you don't mind, right? No, no, if go ahead. Thing, I, t I totally agree. I think schools are dreadful inventions these days. I don't think they were ever very good. Um, if I had my children again, if I was young enough to have children again, I, I would homeschool them. There's no way I would let them into the system. And it, it, it's totally, you know, it's just rotten. In America, it's even worse, obviously, because we hear about these things. Uh, oh God, I've lost track. Man. No, no, you were, we, no, no, we were talking about children and putting children in these very unnatural situations. Yeah, they yeah. Re, they yeah, react but it's more than that. That's it. It's much more than that, Richie, though. It's not the environmental factors. That, environmental factors. I totally agree with you. We're getting hit with everything. I mean, five G. God help us with that. that yeah, thing. yeah. Um, you know, I, I mean, I'm, I have no disagree with me, with you on on all those things. None at all. Um, 
it's but when you're talking about the the cause the cause is i mean it's I still don't think it's that well understood. Now, what I would call it something else. And the reason I mentioned Dr. Bartley before was he's come up with um, a, a ten, a, was it oh, emotional? Oh God, trust me, I've gone lost track of it. But it, it's more to do with the way the you know the, the the way the brain works with the dopamine levels, getting stuff through. Yeah. I mean, you have to you have to kind of have it and then take the take the pill, as it were, to understand. You know. I do. Um, I, I think I do understand. Here's a question for you. You might think this is stupid, I think, but I, I, have, I have a question. It's a, imagine, sorry. imagine for a minute the concept that we're not really supposed to be getting up in the morning and going to work for another human being to earn money mm-hmm. in order to be allowed to live our lives. Imagine if our anxiety, our lack of focus, our lack of concentration... Imagine if it comes down to the fact that we're living this crazy, crazy paradigm where we get up and go to work in jobs that we don't want to work in for people that we don't want to work for, but we have no choice but to do that. Otherwise, we'll be out on the street. Imagine for a minute the idea that maybe adults who are being diagnosed with ADHD, imagine their 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 medical symptoms are in fact a natural response to the craziness of life. Bill, what do you think? To some some extent, I think the uh, the artificial way that we, you know we're working these days is true. Uh, however, um, I'll come back to what I was saying about how it's, things are ramped up a lot more than than you, than you can even imagine. Now, there's a guy I've forgotten who the author was. He 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 compares. Having ADHD to be, uh, you know, the original um, Stone Age type thing, the hunter gatherer, and we were. He he argues that we, or you know, we are still like that. We were yeah. wired to be hunter gatherers. I think there's a bit of truth in that. He, he gets a bit fanciful at times, but you know, there is very similar. Like you, you. There you are. There you are. I think I'm. <laughs> I think I'm getting there. I'm struggling. I'm getting. You're not right. struggling, Bill. You're making a lot of sense. You are not struggling. Right. You're making a lot of sense, my friend. I'm glad well, you're on the, the program. Thank you. Well, the hunter gatherer thing, right? It's a fight or flight response. You're always like a hunter gatherer. You know, you're always there with your your crossbow or what, or your club or something. There's, you're always on the alert. You know, it is it is ridiculous to experience. I have to tell you that. Because it's it's my that's me every day. Except I've managed to calm down using meditation um, to try and you know yes before the we talked before there. I tried everything I possibly could. You talked about uh, I mean CBT. I had four years. I had four years of counselling, man. Four yeah? years. I used to put on I used to put on alternative alternative events for ten years. I put on. Um, alternative therapists, alternative healers. Uh, you know, we used to bring over a guy from the Andes, a shaman from the Andes. So I've tried uh, five element acupuncture. I've tried all sorts of shamanic healing, uh, sweat lodges. I mean, bloody hell, you know. It is unreal. What, you know, I, I don't know anybody else that's looked as as much as I have into why um, <laughs> why there's something, you know, I always felt there was something missing from me, the component missing, yeah? You know, and then there was all only the environmental factors on top of all of that. You gave everything um, a chance, Bill. It sounds like you gave you gave everything a chance. So absolutely. So you do today. You manage it with a mixture of meditation, but also you take some medication. And would your family and friends now, Bill, would they say that you're unrecognisable from the person you used to be? I mean, the people who know you the longest would they be? Would they be absolutely, would they be in a, in a position to say, well, it's really worked for Bill, the medication and that, and uh, it's you've got a much better quality of life. That's what you would say, that's what your family would say. The medication I take, um, if I'm like, you know, I take it for stressful situations. So, you know, like, like, like the hearing I just had a few weeks ago, where I was likely to be sacked. I thought, you know, I might try and just, not react too quickly because, you know, I, I mean, luckily a lot of what I say nowadays comes out as humour, or even if it's crap humour, at least it's humour. Uh, a lot of people I know have seen a huge difference. The biggest difference has been in the last um, four or five years where I've been going to workshops. I've just gone back actually yesterday. 
from Devon where we work. We do these workshops where we're doing uh, we do what we call quantum healing. It's just kind of stuff that you'd uh, probably find very interesting, to be honest. Uh, it's where you're working on yourself, where you're actually, um, you know, you're using dowsing to kind of, um, you know, look at the various aspects. There's, there's all sorts to it. And there are some amazing essences as well, which can work. So there's, a, you know, just in the way the batch flower remedy uh, worked for, uh, you know, rescue remedy worked for calming you down. I used to think called SOS. I used a combination of things. Um, I think for me, it, what I absolutely love is having got to this stage and being able to understand what makes me tick, um, which is quite interesting since I didn't know what time was, but there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's, a fascinating, it's fascinating to hear from you, Bill. Bill has already given out his age. He's 68, uh, uh, Bill. is He rang the programme because of my rant about ADHD and medication earlier on. I, sta- I, 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 I cannot, I don't have any right whatsoever to contradict or criticise anything that Bill has said. I, I could never do that because I'm not Bill, I'm not in his shoes. But, but I do stand by my concern, Bill, that, and I know it might sound very simplistic, but we, we, what we inhabit at the moment is a waking nightmare of a life. All of us. We're running around, worried about not being able to get to the end of the month, we we don't see our families enough. We hate most of us having to work as effective wage slaves for somebody else because if we don't, we're going to be homeless. And then you mentioned the external environmental factors and all of that. And I think there's bound to be a reaction in people. And I think it's interesting that we're hearing these stories now from these psychologists saying that, oh, maybe millions of people have ADHD and are not uh, diagnosed. I... My symptoms were never, the things I encountered were never as strong as you described, Bill. But I have had times when I can't keep a, an open eye on, on on a task. I can't do it. I lose focus and I, I mess it up or I make a mistake. I put it down to getting five hours sleep a night, which is all I get, by the way. And I'm not looking for sympathy. I, I never get more than five hours sleep, ever. I'm co- constantly knackered. And I think that's where it comes from. And I think people are con- are knackered. We we see people now they're knackered. So I think there's probably two or three different types of things going on here. Um, but I can't criticise or contradict what you've said. You know, if that medication married with the meditation, if that has given you a quality of life, Bill, who the hell am I to argue with you? I can't. Well, well, it's a whole lot of other things. And don't forget, I work with people. Uh, literally hundreds of people now. I run various support group, groups around the northeast, and uh, it's just it's it's just amazing. Uh, sometimes do a little some courses and things, and run little courses. Um, you've the I totally agree that you know that you know what you if you don't get enough sleep and all the rest of blah blah blah. Uh, I just um, repeat myself about the the fact it's all of that and a lot more. It's you know it's really really amplified. Now you mentioned prisons earlier. Um, when I first set up the group, um, Rory Bremner, uh, you know, the, the, the comedian. Uh, comedian who were, I think he's about a shite at times, but that's the <laughs> point. He, um, he actually, uh, he, he'd done a thing on Radio 4. So this was about eight years ago. And uh, he was talking about, he didn't at that time admit that he had ADHD, but it was, it was starting to look very obvious from the things he was saying. Now, he um, he did interviewed a guy in a prison in I don't know if he's still there a guy called Gary who ran a thing in Liverpool prison called Wads Up, which was a support group for adults with ADHD, and I talked to him for about two and a half hours, which is like the average length of time for your first conversation with somebody with ADHD. But um, I talked to him and he explained about the prison population. Uh, and this sounded weird. I've been trying to get into prison to fight, to uh, talk to people there, but the Security, as you might expect with a prison, um, you see, it's uh, it's quite crazy. You can't get to talk to people because I want to know more about it. I know the stats are high. I'm not, I can't, um, can't remember offhand. They are massive, and a lot of it's to do with an inability to control a, an impulse. You don't have that. You don't have that thing about. You don't have the brakes, basically, and it, it can wreck relationships as well. There's a good author, author called Gina Pira who writes about relationships as being 
uh, part of a roller coaster ride, and they are for everybody. Yeah, you see everything you were saying that you, you know I totally agree with you. Everybody's going through some sort of stuff, but this is like much, on a much greater scale than you can possibly imagine, and it's it's really horrible. I mean, it's lovely now for me because I I know what it's about. I didn't understand why I was always getting into trouble. I was always like, um, you know, completely stupid at times. I I just opened my mouth and God knows what would come out. Um. I mean, I can't. Sorry, I'm repeating myself. There. You're not. No, there. you're not repeating yourself. You're you're wonderfully articulating what you've experienced. I'm really impressed with this. Well, ultimately, it comes down to before because there are other callers, and I'm going to try and take one or two more calls before I finish. Ultimately, what it comes down to is we have two trains of thought. I believe, and I'm no expert. I've got to first of all admit that I'm not a doctor. I'm not medically trained. This is just my theory. My theory is that what you've experienced is real. It's not a figment of your imagination. Absolutely not. And the extremes of it, as you've described them, I have no doubt that is exactly what you experienced. I think where we might differ, I believe passionately that the madness of the lives we lead, the things that we have to do when we're children and all of that, I believe that that is the root cause of it. But I think you believe, Bill, and you're absolutely entitled to believe it, you believe that even taking away all of those other factors, you think that it's a possibility that somebody could develop it anyway. I think that's where we differ, maybe. You, you don't develop it. It's very much you. It's very much something that you're or it's born in with. you. It's in you. Okay. It's not something you're going to acquire. Yeah. And it's, a, it's definitely a genetic component because there's a lot of people come to the groups who their children have been diagnosed, uh, and then they've started to say, "Oh my God, that's a that's just like me." Um, you know, they start, and what's lovely is that there's the, they'll often bring the children along, and um, you know, there's a great deal of support there and understanding about what of what people are going through. Bill, do you want to give a plug for anything? Um, because you're involved, obviously, with meeting mm-hmm. others with um, with these um, symptoms and conditions. Is there anything you want to give a plug for? Is there some place you'd like to direct the listeners to look to find out more yeah. about it? Go ahead. I've, I've, got a web, I've actually got a website. Just a minute. Uh, this is, you know, memory is not my best thing. <laughs> so I, I'm just, I'll, I'll just, uh, I'll mention it in a minute. If anybody wants to ring me, they're, they're very welcome to do so. Um, I, you know, I'm very open to talking to anybody about it. We've, incidentally, we've got, uh, we'll have one of our members will be, is doing some research at Durham University, which will be published soon, which is uh, going to be very interesting for people. Okay. So, uh, uh, yeah. Have you got that website handy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is embarrassing. This is something I've been working on for years, and I keep forgetting what it is. The website so, title. What, what the, yeah. See, you've got things like that, which is really embarrassing, you know? Um, I mean, I... I but there's know, nothing to I be did, embarrassed did, about that. Why would you be embarrassed about that? That's just fact of life. Some people are forgetful. Some people remember everything. Some people are like elephants, well, right? Well, you like this one, you like this one, Rishi. I had a thousand business cards printed and forgot to get the telephone number put on. <laughs> oh, no. Is that true? I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, there's so many funny things. So yeah. many funny things. Right. A, right. A, A. So, A, A, D, H, D. Go ahead. Dash. N, E. Dash, U, K. Dot, Weebly. Dot com. Say that one more time. A, A, D, H, D. Dash, N, E. Dash, U, K. Dot weebly.com. Got it. A A D H D dash N E dot weebly dot com. I'll make a note of that and I'll give it a tweet. Bill, thanks so much for coming on. Thank you very much. I really appreciate Uh, it. I really do appreciate it because I've been, um, I often hear you talk about ADHD and I think, oh God, I I would just love to have a reasonable conversation with this guy because, you know, um, we're 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 yeah. finished. We're we're in serious trouble if we can't have reasonable conversations. <laughs> Simple yeah, as yeah. that. Yeah. Bill, thanks, mate. Yeah, I really and, appreciate and, that. And, and, and uh, well done with the show. It's absolutely brilliant. It always is. You're a gentleman for saying that. Thanks for coming mm-hmm. on and explaining uh, your points of view and talking about your experiences with ADHD. I really appreciate it, Bill. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Now. And bye for now. Me. Boy, that was Bill Scott there who phoned in on the back of me ranting earlier on about Richard Bacon and the response to uh, Richard Bacon. Now, a lot of calls came in there. I'm sorry. 
what we'll have to do is we'll have to do another phone-in show for longer next week to make up for it. I meant to take loads of calls there. But Bill, um, what Bill was saying was very important. Um, it's genuine right of reply. Now, I'm going to stand by my guns here. I don't believe people should be medicated for the things that Bill described, even though Bill said they were very severe to him and they caused him great problems professionally and socially. I believe that these things, first of all, they are symptoms. They they are natural responses to life, I believe. And I believe they can be dealt with in therapy. That's what I believe. Now, Bill expressly said, no, that's not true in his case. Caller, welcome to the programme. Who's them um, calling and where are you calling from? Good evening. Uh, it's Dean Smith, Richie. Ah, uh, Dean, you. welcome. Yeah, Dean, I thought you might call in. Uh, you were listening uh, to Bill. What, what's your response? Uh, no, I thought Bill's call was, was absolutely excellent, to be honest. I, I, I could spend uh, an age on, on his call and uh, sort of what the things he was talking about. It's not what I, what I called in for, really, Rich, to be honest. Go ahead then, uh, uh, Dean. Go ahead, mate. I'm going to try and take a few uh, calls. I'm going, to, I'm going to limit people to three or four minutes from here, if you well, don't mind. Well, so go ahead. I'll, yeah, yeah. I've called in, so I'll, I'll try and keep it short. I, I wanted to talk about the uh, 5G, um, the stuff in Sheffield with the tree fell in. A court, now you did tweet something about this earlier on. I did see it. The yeah, I, I sent you an e- I sent you an email with a, a lot of details from from my point of view, actually living in Sheffield um, and and seeing what's been going on. Brilliant, Dean. Um, I look for that. So so so. Nearly twenty thousand so, so, trees are being cut down. Take take it from there. Go ahead. Right, right. Well, I'll take no. I'll take it back a little bit, if if, if you don't mind. It's um, about five years ago. The EU granted Sheffield uh, five billion pounds to upgrade the road and network system because obviously Sheffield was known as the worst uh, pothole road. It was pothole hell. Um, so so uh, the media at the time sort of. Uh, projected that as a really positive thing, um, so uh, that that was the first part. So the EU gives us five billion uh, to the council to do, to do that, but that that was over a period of about fifteen to twenty years, I believe. Um, so so the, the, like I said, the, the media portrayed this as a really positive thing. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's sort of the the, the first dot of it. Uh, so then they, they subcontracted out to a, a company called Amy, and that's the company. That is, is has been doing all the um, new lampposts, cutting the trees down, doing the new pavements, the roads, everything. So um, um, early on, the, or the first couple of years, f- from what I can see, I, I live on a road that's been done. I've got a, a new lamppost outside my house. The whole road's been done, but I'm not. I don't live on a street, uh, a tree-lined street. So um, I think what they what they did originally was did the the sort of non street uh, tree line streets uh, originally to uh, just sort of test the waters. Then they had to start doing. Obviously, Sheffield's a, a massive city of um, trees. Uh, it's, it's famously known for uh, for being one of the greenest cities in um, in, in 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 Europe. Uh, now it, it seems to me they targeted the streets like mine that are not uh, tree lined first, um, and then sort of two years later when they've done those, they've had to move on to the uh, the ones with the trees. And this is where the tree protesters come in. Um, now that most of the tree protesters, they 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 believe they're just protesting to save the trees because the the council and AMA were saying we're going to cut down down the the trees that are at risk the the poorly trees and put the trees in. causing damage they're causing damage to properties yeah. or whatever else yeah um now now so what you're saying Dean what you're saying is the protesters don't have a clue about 5G they're I'm 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 not saying they don't have a clue most of them won't though most of them won't do they're up in arms because they believe the trees are not in fact diseased they don't know what's going on they're cheesed off about it but i would guess most of them don't know but i, I um, don't think they, i don't yeah. think they all know now that from what I, from who i've spoken to and people that that i've dealt with they don't know they've not been able to link it and this is where i'm coming to the to the sort of uh, dot joining of it um now um uh, let me see <laughs> i wrote it all down sorry uh, so so anyway the, the debates got heated when Obviously, they started going for the, the, the streets that needed trees to rem- be removed. And the council was saying that the trees that needed to be removed were the ones that would cause 
damage to property or uh, um, um, or diseased. Now, recently, that's changed now to also trees that would that, that they've called them discriminatory trees. So discriminatory I, trees. I, yeah, discriminatory. That's the that's the key word they're using lately, which to me suggests it's it's like um, a play on words, if you like. And I suppose they could. What's a discriminatory tree? It's, it, it discriminates against uh, people that are disabled. It might get in the way. Right now, so so if a tree is getting in the way legally, if you challenge that, how can you challenge that? But, but yeah, yeah, there are trees that, 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 that there's parts of pavement pavements in the older uh, streets in Sheffield where the the tarmac has come up and things like that. So so they're the ones they're calling discriminatory trees because they are sort of discriminatory against blind or, or disabled people. There might be a better way of uh, dealing with those trees, though, than cutting them down, and that's, of course, what's... There are, what's and it's the, been done. It's been done before. Yeah. It's been done before, yes. Um, now, so this led me to, to sort of start researching the company Amy. Um, so I started looking at the company Amy. Now, Amy um, is, is a, a huge, huge company that, that contracts out to... Uh, it's, it's global, to be fair, and one of their key research, the, the parts that they do research in, is they create smart cities. Wow. So so they are a leading, or one of the world leaders in creating a smart city. So does that make us a test bed for a smart city, linking back to the trees? Now, I called this out on Facebook a while back, and uh, obviously I was ridiculed for it going back a year or so. But that's sort of what happens when you can sort of see what's already going on. Now, <laughs> digging a little bit deeper, and this is all on their own website because they, bra- they brag about it on the website. So they're also part of a sort of conglomerate group of other uh, international corporations that are uh, leaders in the development of driverless cars. And this is where the dots join together. So they are a because, subsidiary, Amy is a subsidiary firm of another group of firms that are involved in other tech ideas like this. Lead, leading tech of leading driverless, tech, cars. driverless cars, right. Yeah, so, but as we know, driver, driverless cars are like in their infancy at the minute. But if you've got a 5G smart grid that can map your house in, in 3D, it can certainly map a car in 3D and... and, and it, 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 to me, it's all. But I'm, I might be so far off the mark, but I just don't think I am. <laughs> no, I don't think I don't think you are either. And it's been it's been said by people with a little bit more experience than I have, or more far more knowledge than I have about the biological makeup of um, you know the botanical world. Trees, of course, trees, and they say that the the frequency on which five G operates it encounters difficulties. Trees are problematic for it. That's what we're being yeah. told. Hence, yeah. the trees have and, to and come down. The, the, probably the, the most tree-lined street in, the, in, in Europe uh, is a real problem. But that's where I go back to my first point, yeah. where I say my, my, the, the street that I, I live on is not tree-lined. That was done first. Now, remind our listeners, Dean, of that coincidence. Remind our listeners what this company, Amy, how it, how it originally came into Sheffield. How it, the company was subcontracted by the the the, the council. Now I don't, I don't know for sure if the council even know the sort of the agenda itself. Maybe they they because uh, as you said to um, uh, I forget his name now, Mr. Rappaport last night on last night's show, you explained about Sheffield a little bit, and you said they they've now suspended due to the hostile resistance that yeah, they found in yesterday. Sheffield, which is you know. Godspeed to those uh, uh, protesters because, uh, like I say, I think most of them are just saving the trees. Um, I've lost my train of thought now. Uh, no, we were talking about Amy and why Amy was subcontracted by Sheffield City Council, what it was brought in to do. Just to remind people of that, you know, because that's how we got into who Amy is and it's a subsidiary of other companies. I just wanted to reiterate that. But I cost you your train of thought there because that, I just wanted right. to reiterate yeah, I, I that. Yeah. I don't know if the councillors for sure knew or know why uh, Amy was chosen or if they... Uh, well, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, let, let me put it this way. The, 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 the tree felling will start again real soon. Yeah. This is just a temporary delay because 
the people within the council, whether they, whether they know or not know the agenda itself, they will soon be told by their masters who, you know, um, who obviously granted us the five billion in the first place from the EU to, to to make this happen. But none of this has been told to the to the public of Sheffield. None of it. It's only it's, it's only what I've obviously listening to you, reading David I, knowing sort of what's going on, that that you can join the dots and and you think, oh my god, it all makes sense. But you don't even have to dig very deep. Richie, it is no, clearly on it. their website. They brag about it. Yeah, this is the thing, and it, it, it it's it's why it's very frustrating because there are obviously people in Sheffield, and they are in the minority. People like you, who suspect very strongly what's really going on with the trees, and they will be telling people, and they will be immediately dismissed as barking mad, no pun intended, conspiracy theorists. When you're quite right, you only have to use a search engine for five seconds. To make yeah, the connections, find it. that's all you yeah. have to do. It's it's so frustrating, you know. Oh, ah, yeah. bedwetting, tinfoil hat wearer. Well, hang on a second. <laughs> Just do. I'm not asking you to go to Infowars. I'm not asking you to go to David Icke or whatever. Go to BBC.co.uk or go to SheffieldCityCouncil.co.uk. Bang, it's all there for you. Or right go there. to Amy.co.uk and see what they actually do yeah. around the world. They're already doing it. They're doing it. And Mark Steele told us what's happening in, in Gateshead. And I'm trying to yeah, find well, out... If yeah, he was brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm trying to find out if it's happening here fantastic. in this city. Do you, know, do you know what I was thinking, Dean? He was fantastic, Mark Steele. You have to yeah. imagine Manchester's... Manchester is a huge city. It's a gateway city now, Manchester. I mean, in terms of, you know, the, the it, it's massive. There's so much going on up here. Of course, that um, graphene project and everything else that's going on here as well. You have to imagine Manchester is going to be, is going to be not so much a test case, but it's going to be like a poster city for this 5G as well because of the universities and everything else. And I'm trying to find out if any of this is happening anywhere in Manchester. But I can't find, as of yet, I haven't found anything. But I'm expecting in the very near future that some of this stuff that's happening in Sheffield will begin to happen up here. Because it may well. outside of the yeah. city centre, it's a pretty green city here as well. Mm-hmm. You know, with with I mean, we've got a park every two hundred meters. We've got loads of streets in South Manchester that are absolutely covered in trees. It's fabulous. It's mm-hmm. very leafy, and and I just wonder about that. You know, yeah, which is a wonderful thing, and they 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 they're spoiling it. So. You start anyway, think, listen, Richie, I, I just wanted to make that point. So really I know, good I know you, you can have other callers, so let, let other people have a say. But I, I thought it was really important after you spoke to uh, Mr. Rappaport last night, who was, was great as well. So. well. Thanks for doing it, Dean. I appreciate and you, it. And your previous caller was great as well, don't forget, Bill. He was, he was great. Yeah, it was great to get that bit of balance. Yeah, I really do appreciate that. Dean, thanks, okay. mate. Thanks well, for your help and thanks, thanks for, for sharing that. Not at all, mate. Any time. Bye for now. That was Dean there. And I probably have time for one more, probably. I've only got about four or five minutes, though. So let's say, caller, welcome to the programme. Good evening. Hi, Richie. Good evening. Who am I speaking with? It's the aged hippie from Essex. The aged hippie from Essex. Yeah, Jane. We haven't spoken for a long time. Jane, we haven't. Welcome. It's good to to, to speak to you again. You've got about four and a half minutes, Jane. So I'm going to shut up and you can say what you want. Keep it brief. Go ahead. We're free spirits put into this body for this moment in time. When we enter into the world, we take the first breath, and from that moment on, the object of the exercise is to try and keep our spirits free, our minds free. We're controlled by the state of our heart, our soul. Is our heart and soul with the intention of hurt? Or is it with the intention of nurture? Mother Nature created the planet sufficient to support us all with plants and herbs because she knew that our our bodies are going to take a bashing in whatever way it comes, be it by 5G, be it by a nuclear bomb. She knew that we were going to need help So she put in place plants, medicines, herbs, all there. 
and it's everything we needed to make our lives really, really happy and content. All there. And she's been beaten and trodden on since the game began. And it is a game. It's the game of life. And we're all living it, whether we know it or not. My spirit is free. My heart is pure. And I know that I've been here before. I've been here before with millions of others of free spirits who connect by invisible threads all over this earth. And we're rising up. The spirits are people. The spirits are being let out of boxes. The truth is being shown. We're living in the age of enlightenment. We have the internet, and it connects us all. In the past, we've had to live in the dark because we couldn't see what was going on. We can see it now. We can, it's right in front of us, right smack bang in front of us. I watch this global puppet show every day, and I, I, I emphasize the words watch. Yeah. Watch. Jane, can I ask you a question? Thinking of Bill's call, then, presumably you heard Bill. Mm -hmm. Is what Bill has experienced, in your opinion, then, it sounds like you might, you might agree with me, it, because you talked about when we came into, into being, everything was here, plant life, everything natural yeah. was here for yeah. us to, to navigate, to traverse, yeah. for want of a better word, life. Yeah. That's been but attacked. Thing, is, is, what, is what's happening to Bill and others, is that a natural reaction to the, the, the onslaught, terrible things? And, uh, an onslaught. You know, we've all been... The, 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 the dark energy which lives in, you know, the global... If you think of it as a global puppet show, in the bowels of the theatre, hidden from view, is, this, is the beast. A snake, Satan, call it what you will. But it's an energy, a dark energy, which blocks out all light. And in the bowels of the theatre are the Satanists, the child abusers, who have, since the game began, have, in order to survive, has sucked the life force out of us. And that creates a dark energy, Jane. That creates, yes. it, it affects the, the, the dark, atmosphere, right? The, yeah, the dark energy has crept out of the bowels of the theatre and has infiltrated us in it, whatever way. Hence the illnesses. Hence sickness, illness, problems. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. And the mind, our onboard computer system, that when we, the spark was, was ignited from the purest form of energy, when that system was designed and implanted within us, it was perfect. It was all singing, all dancing, that we had all our senses. We could talk to one another without being in the same room. I feel I can do that now because I've stepped out of the world and I'm watching and I'm watching and waiting because the game is going to come to an end and it's going to end in one of two ways. Either man is going to destroy it and we're going to end in a big bang, in which case I believe the free spirits will be taken from the earth because we could have done no more. We couldn't, we hadn't done enough. But I feel at this stage in the proceedings, we're doing enough that we can turn this around. And the first thing you have to do is you have to free your mind. You have to have the ability to stand back and look at the whole thing. We're in a loop. The planet, by its very nature, is going round in a loop. Round and round and round and round. And we're coming to the point where we're going to meet ourselves coming back. At the Jane, this, this is incredibly interesting to me, but I've got to cut a horn to it I just understand. for now because I I'm understand. just out of time, right? 
Um, yeah. I'm really interested in that, and <laughs> I'll invite you back on to yeah, talk about I really it more. I'd like to, to chat with you at some point because you are an amazing man. Not at all. You really are. Jane, I'll and tell you I what I'm going to do. Your work. Well, thanks so much and for saying that, first of all. I don't do anything, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a note of your number. And I'll please, get in touch please. with you, and I'll get you back yeah, on when we've more time to talk. Me and and what I, I think I can help move things along a little bit, if you know what I mean. Well, your opinions, because Jane, are very interesting can, to me. I, I can see what's coming. I can see clearly what's coming. And it's gonna, it's, we're, we're all right. We're heading in the right direction. That's what I'm saying to you. So don't despair. Don't give up. Just remind yourself that you are infinite energy. And Ch- even if they take your physical body and they stamp all over it and they kill you completely, your spirit will always be free. Jane, that's brilliant. I'm going to leave it there because I've got to get all out right, of the programme. You. You've got my word. I'll get in touch with you. Thanks so much for that. That was Jane there. And I don't like cutting her short because that's very interesting. But I've got to get out of the programme. 